Hi, I'm Jean Fiorini. Thanks for being here at the Tarot Tips. I'd like to continue our conversation about the web of connections. How whatever learning, uh, exploring, interest you have in other subjects, these things can often um, have tendrils of meaning back to the tarot system. Um, like I said in the previous video, it's not important to think that you have to become a scholar about anything. I think it's really just a question of following your nose, what, what interests you. Um, I am really interested in prehistory. I'm interested in what the the small amount of material that there is left behind but the significance of the material that's left behind by cultures from four or five thousand years ago um, we tend to think of these cultures civilizations people as primitive i think that the more we uncover and discover um archaeologically, uh, um, we understand that uh, peoples who lived, you know, even maybe 10,000, 12,000 years ago uh, were not primitive in terms of uh, rock eaters, <laughs> that, there, that there were sophisticated understandings about the cosmos in particular. So um, stone circles are of interest to me, archaeological discoveries, you know, when people say humans haven't been around, you know, as we know it uh, longer than 10,000 years, I don't buy it. <laughs> I think that there's a whole lot about prehistory that we, with our te technological intelligence, think that we are so advanced. But when you look at places like Newgrange in Ireland, which is aligned directly with the winter solstice, when, you know, if you've been to Stonehenge, if you've been to any of the thousands of stone circles in uh, Europe and the UK, um, uh, Mexico, South America, Machu Picchu, you know, what, what did these people understand? How did they, you know, the how did they do it? How did they build it thing? You know, that's a whole other topic. But the point being that the sky was such an important part of their reality. I'm really interested in that, understanding that, um, uh, learning about that. And I ran across this book called Planets for Pagans. Uh, which isn't about me being a pagan, which I don't consider myself. Um, but the idea that prehistoric, by that I mean people who didn't write down their history literally, um, uh, sacred sites, ancient lore, and magical stargazing, how um, significant and tied into what was happening with the stars, whether it was for material things like agriculture or um, when to wage a battle or when to um, have a certain ritual. Uh, the stars, they had a connection to the sky that, you know, really has been lost over the last five or six or seven hundred years. Anyway, one of the examples I'm going to talk about comes from this book. So, you know, it, it wasn't, oh, I'm going to try to set out to, f to find ways that these ideas might fit with some tarot ideas, but I found a little gem in here that I want to share with you. So Planets for Pagans, the author's name is Rena Shesso, S-H-E-S-S-O, if you're inclined to check out this book. Um, so connections with other sources uh, can be such a concretizing, validating way to bring further meaning to your readings. That's going to be the point and the follow-up from the uh, previous video. This also includes other tarot decks and uh, the second example I have today 
is how something that a client said, again using their words from their experience, connected to a tarot deck other than what I was using at the time, but that really drove home the point. So let's go to the tarot table and I'll show you a couple examples about what I'm talking about. The example from the Planets for Pagans uh, book that I'd like to share today has to do with the Chariot card. Um, I think one of the most common impressions, first impressions of the Chariot card is that uh, there's quite a lot going on, at least in the traditional version of this card. We have the sphinxes with the two different colors. We have a, a chariot that looks like it's made out of stone. So we might say, well, how is that moving? Um, we have a city scene in the background here, but then we have all the celestial stuff going on here. Moon, epaulets, stars in the sky. Uh, this winged spirit idea. There's a whole lot of stuff going on with that card. Um, now, Rene Chesso makes the comment in uh, at the early part of this book that um, if you think about just the most obvious things that you see when you look up in the sky, uh, the things that really catch your eye are the North Star and the big and the, what we call the Big and Little Dipper. Um, through her research, she understands or has come to know that across cultures, um, even though we know the Big and Little Dippers as Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, the bear, the bears, there were many folk names for those two particular collections of stars. Um, some are associated with plow, with wagon, and with chariot, interestingly. Now because additionally there are seven very bright stars in each of these um, collections of stars, both the Big and Little Dippers, um, this, that seven, and this is Major Arcana card seven, the association was made in the 19th and 20th century that the chariot card could be associated with the northern star. We think of the north star, the pole star, as where we set our sights to find our correct direction, where we aim ourselves if we want to find what, you know, has come colloquially, but also literally is true north. What is your true north? So to connect these two ideas of orientating ourselves, orienting ourselves to our north star, to be driven and supported in authenticity by setting ourselves in alignment with the North Star. It really speaks to the idea of the chariot as being a card of self-awareness, of focus along a certain path, of at least temporarily knowing where you're going. Um, so a very concrete and I found a cosmic connection between the chariot card, which sometimes can have such, um, if you want to say mundane meanings for a people, just, just stay on your path, just keep doing what you're doing, have courage, have confidence. But to connect it to this really ancient idea about if you, if you can see the North Star, if you know where that is, uh, it's going to lead you to truth to alignment and to authenticity. So I really love that little tidbit of information. Our next example has something more to do with connection with another tarot deck. And it starts by looking at a reading, uh, a Celtic reading done for a person fairly recently. Uh, these are the first two cards in the middle. 
the Knight of Pentacles and the Four of Wands. And then in the fifth position above, they had the World card. Now there were other things in the layout. I'm not going to um, go into what those are. They're not really relevant to the discussion here. Um, if we say that the first two cards are the situation that the person finds themselves, we see this very stable, one day at a time, you know, kind of methodical knight of pentacles. And then we see this card of harmony, uh, of ease, of pleasure in the home. I always think about this as the happy home card. That's a very contented, calm, pleasant center. And then if we go to the fifth position, I think about the fifth position, the one that's above the central two cards as where's the person most conscious of being? This might be the situation. Here's their connection or relationship to this. We see that world card. Now the world card, like many cards, can be enigmatic. It can mean uh, reaching for the goal, but it also can be the attainment of the goal. And the person pretty much immediately who I was speaking with um, piped up and said, yes, I feel very uh, settled. And I feel like, you know, I worked really hard over the last couple of months. But I feel like the, all the pieces of the puzzle have come into place. And I feel a, a great sense of um, completion and satisfaction with a job well done. I said, well, again, very interesting comment because in the Osho Zen Tarot, the card 21, which traditionally is called the world card, is called completion 21 and it shows a person see if i can get that placing the last piece into a puzzle so once again the client came up with uh the perfect metaphor because i have this tarot deck and know of this i was able to bring it in and it, it told me two things. It, when something like this happens, it says to me that, okay, we were reading this very appropriately for the client, but really more importantly, it says to me, for that person to make that comment says to me that they are aware of themselves. They are aware of the significance of this for them. They are paying attention to both the minor everyday stuff as well as the larger picture things that are happening for them. And so you can give yourself a little credit for uh, picking up on a cue, but really the credit here goes to the client who has enough self-awareness and intention about their life to understand that this kind of thing is going on for them. For someone to make such a, a pointed and specifically appropriate <laughs> comment to the nature of that card. So the journey never ends. Um, there's always something interesting happening at the tarot table. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.